Hello, everybody. Okay, uh, that is 1976 Corvette, and it has a problem. The heater core started leaking, and today I'm going to start uh, replacing the, the heater core, and I wanted to put this on video so other people can uh, see at least what I'm up against, and maybe you can um, use some of the information if you have to do this yourself. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain out a significant amount of the radiator coolant and I'm going to try to use this pump and I'm going to try to put it into the gallon jugs in order to reuse some of the fluid. Uh, and they want to get the fluid level down below where the heater hoses connect to the heater core um, up against the firewall. And that way, uh, a lot less um, fluid will be trying to come out of the hoses when I disconnect them from the, uh, from the heater core uh, feed nipples. And it looks like the pump is going to work. Uh, the feed lines down into the radiator. The output line goes down to the um, gallon jug. So I'll fill both of these and then perhaps another one um, to bring the coolant level down. Well, pumping out the radiator worked out pretty well. It looks like I got a gallon and a half. And that little transfer pump, um, I, I think that came from Harbor Freight. And I'm surprised that it, that it worked as well as it did. Next job is to get the front of the Corvette lifted off the ground. And I do use jack stands when I bring the car up off the ground and I'm going to work underneath it. Um, another Harbor Freight uh, tool, it's the, the lightweight um, uh, jack. So in just a moment, I'll go ahead and lift the front up and get the jack stands in place and then we'll get underneath the creeper and get underneath the car to uh, remove the heater hoses. Okay, and the Corvette is up on the jack stands and I do leave the... Um, the jack, um, you know, in the raised position, I don't think it's holding any weight, um, but it is there as a precaution in case some crazy thing happens. Uh, I am in California, Southern California, and you never know, an earthquake could start uh, just at any time. So I like to have the security of not only the jack stands holding the car up, but also the jack still underneath it so that in the event an earthquake did start shaking, you know, I would have a couple of seconds to, to get out from underneath the car before, uh, you know, any disaster happened. So next up, it's to go underneath and to get the heater hoses off. I'm going to use the, uh, the oil drain pan to catch any of the additional radiator fluid that's going to come out of the core and also the lines. I have um, hose clamps on the... Uh, the heater hoses and I can't remember exactly what size so that's why I'm going to take both wrenches underneath with me as well as the flat blade screwdriver. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to wear gloves. Uh, you know, I don't want to get my hands too dirty um, dealing with the all the road dust that's uh, built up underneath the car. So in a moment we'll be underneath the car and we'll take a look at the uh, the location where the heater hoses come off. Okay, um, underneath the Corvette, and there's not much light down here. Just a little flashlight um, sitting on the frame rail. And those two um, hoses are the, the, the feed and return line for the heater core. And that would be the hose clamps that have to come off. And there's not much room up in there. Uh... In this car, there are uh, some items for its fuel injection, the, uh, the fuel filter, and then a pressure regulator. Uh, so I hope not to drip too much coolant down on those items. So in just a moment, I will be able to um, <laughs> show you how much radiator fluid is going to be dripping all over the me, all over the floor, um, you know, making a mess of everything. I hope not too much. Yes, uh, that's the kind of mess that 
that uh, that happens when you don't have uh, you know good tools for catching the fluids that come out of hoses when you disconnect them from the you know where they they need to go. It's kind of a big mess. Also, um, since I took the last video, um, you know, showing you where the the heater hoses connect. It's been about 30 minutes, and, and that's because both of those hoses uh, had been on the that heater core, those nipples, for I think five years, and uh, they were a little bit seized, and I had to wrestle them uh, quite a bit, so uh, it's no fun. They're not easy to get to, in my opinion. Um, you know, you're going to end up with uh, a couple of bruises around your wrist. Um, you know, reaching up in there and putting enough effort to break loose the rubber from the um, heater core nipples. But anyways, in this case, it's done. And uh, next we're going to move uh, inside the car. Okay, now let's talk about uh, what's going on um, inside the passenger side of the Corvette. Um, the heater core, it's in an air handler. And that air handler is... Uh, this guy way up underneath here and all of this has to come out and on this particular um, Corvette uh, I've added um, you know, a modern radio and um, some accessories like electric locks and uh, those those things required the additional wiring uh, that's packed back in behind the center console When this uh, heater core um, was leaking, and uh, uh, on a, on this C3 Corvette, when the heater core leaks, if it if it it leaks on the inside of the car, which is a you know pretty big pain in the ass, in that it drips down, and the fluid will just continue to collect, um, you know, down in this footwell. So that was a mess. So the parts that I've already taken apart, um, I did that uh, uh, another day uh, trying to figure out what was going wrong with the, um, you know, why there was a coolant where it shouldn't be. So I've got that uh, uh, door seal taken loose. And um, I already vacuumed out uh, a significant amount of uh, fluid that was captured in this footwell. But, um, Something about this, uh, this was carpet that I installed um, back in, I think, 2001. And at that time, uh, I also put in a carpet underlayment kit. And beneath that, um, I put in um, something that uh, this was supposed to stop the heat transfer from the exhaust system, which is uh, directly underneath this footwell, uh, you know, from radiating up into the cabin. You know, it did okay, um, but now all of that product is has been soaked in uh, in radiator coolant. Uh, so it's uh, probably got some smell in the uh, the carpet. It's got some of that uh, coolant smell in the the underlayment, and probably has uh, uh, coolant smell down in the um, heat um, resistant um, um, product that I put underneath the um, underneath the footwell area. So all that's got to come out. Uh, in this case, uh, just to get some more room, I think I'm going to take out the passenger seat. Um, and if you look up uh, a little bit higher in the car, uh, you have to take apart at, at least the passenger side of the dash uh, in order to get access back in there. Now what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to remove that air handler without having to take out the center console. Uh, as you can see in the center console, you've got the radio, you've got the gauges, uh, you've got uh, the uh, central air conditioning uh, vents, which means you've got a duct that goes from the air handler up to that central vent. And to get, uh, to get that out, uh, you're probably going to have to uh, loosen the center console. And of course, it's got the shifter, so this is uh, really, really a, a thankless job on the Corvette, uh, C3 Corvette. To, get to your heater core. So I'll get started on taking apart the dash to get some more access to see what's going on in there and then I'll pick up another video segment 
um, when I get to a place that I want to show you some things that I have to um, take apart in order to get that heater core box out and, uh, and then uh, exchange the heater core itself. So hang on. The passenger side dash panels, uh, it's off. And I just want to mention a handful of things in here. Um, there are three screws across the top. And those, um, I believe they drill up into the base of the dash pad, po possibly. There are two screws on the side, and they go into these uh, clips through here and through here. And then, also on the center console, there are two screw holes that, that go through the, the console and then that would go into the uh, side of the, of the dash pad. But, um, back when I put together this interior, uh, I actually did not um, screw in the, the side of the, the console to the, to the dash pad, so that's why there's no holes over here. Uh, regarding the dash pad, let's take a look at it. Uh, the dash pad, it's, uh, it's plastic. And over here at the um, extreme passenger side, it has the, uh, the duct that goes into the, uh, to the ball vent um, on the front. And then, of course, it's got the little push button that is a damper that will either turn it on or off. Um, it has been a long time since I looked at all of this. I think it's been five years. So, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure all of this, uh, you know, it's, it's operational. But you know, this is 1970s um, um, Detroit engineering. So uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's uh, it's appreciated, um, but it's not uh, perfect. So we'll set this aside, and then we'll take a look under underneath the dash itself. Now, I mentioned that that there were ducts that that went across the behind the behind the dash panel and this is this is um, this is one that that provides air over to the um, to that um, ball outlet uh, that comes through the dash pad. So and it, you can see that it just it just drops out um, you know nice and easy out of its uh, plenum um, over here at the, uh, at the center console area. So I'm going to set this aside. Okay, and of course we talked about the, um, the center plenum. The center plenum uh, takes air and you can see that it, uh, it has a pathway that goes up and then the air will come out those uh, center vents. So, of course, very much appreciated, um, you know, when you need the air conditioning. But uh, very much uh, alarming in that I may have to take that out to get the, the air handler out. We can also see that the wiring harness is, um, uh, you know, hanging. We have the uh, the flasher. There's actually two flashers over here, and I can't remember. Um, I think one of them is for hazard lights, and then the other one is for turn signals. And in this case, the the one for the turn signals, I had to switch to a um, um, digital flasher instead of the the old style flasher because I have LED uh, light bulbs in the turn signals, so uh, you know they don't have enough uh, resistance to trigger the um, the old uh, style flasher hence you have to use the digital style flasher for um, LED bulbs in your system so we're going to take a closer look at uh, what it's going to take to get this beast out um, you know I did um, I did see that a, um, a broken piece of something has come off, and I don't remember, um, you know, exactly where this goes. Uh, you know, maybe I can spot it down here, and I'm probably going to want to uh, put that back in um, with a little bit of glue, uh, so that it makes a neat trim um, down where the um, 
door panel trim um, clamps on top of it. So we're not going to lose that. Okay, uh, just a few more minutes and I'll uh, bring you back on board and show you what I have um, been able to accomplish getting that air handler loose. Yeah, um, after I looked at that a little bit closer, um, it looks like in order to get the, the, the center air conditioning vet plenum, um, that's got to come off uh, in order for the air handler to drop out. But in order to get to the to that um, center air conditioning duct uh, plenum, it looks like uh, you do have to take out um, the wiper control and the actual um, vents, and they are somewhat connected. It, it, that is the connector for the windshield wiper switch, and uh, that may be a light that's um, going to illuminate um, the, the switch panel. Uh, but in any event, um, it's, it's, it's out now. It's only one screw up on the top and then two screws that, that terminate into this metal plate. Okay, uh, looks like I may have to actually deal with that center console piece, so more to follow. Update, uh, just about, oh, I don't know, it's uh, coming up on my second two and a half hours, um, you know, into this job already. The uh, the center console is is loose, um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, um, you know, take it loose anymore. And I'm not sure I want to take it loose anymore. The um, th the console has two pegs, uh, two threaded um, um, uh, studs uh, that come out the bottom of it, and then they go through the console right about where my index finger is. So you have to reach back up in there, and uh, you have to undo the nut and the washer, and, and um, they're one on each side in order to loosen that console. But in any event, it is loose, uh, but it has a lot of wires, um, you know, going into the back of it, um, it cables uh, for the radio system, and then of course cables for the gauges. Um, but now that it is loose, I'm going to go ahead and um, start working on uh, getting this guy loose. Um, he's held on by a little 7 sixteenths um, um, bolt that ties this uh, to that. And I'm not sure, I don't remember what's on the other side. It may just be a, a friction fitting, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, turn loose the, the, the bolt. Uh, give it a tug and uh, see if it'll come out uh, toward the passenger side. More to follow. Back again. And uh, this uh, plenum that serves the uh, the upper air conditioning vents and it also uh, serves the driver's side. Now um, this required blood uh, for me to get this thing out. Unfortunately, you know, it took a bit of tugging and there's a lot of obstructions over there. Um, so perhaps I'm not the classiest mechanic. Uh, but in any event, it is out. Now, uh, I've done this job before. Uh, uh, back in uh, 2014, um, I had the dash apart in order to um, install um, additional electrical wiring and at that time I replaced uh, the original heater core from 1976 so I've, I've had this thing apart before and of course um, um, you know when I put it back together again I put in the, the um, um, you know the, the gasket kit so that was pretty good 
But uh, one thing I do remember was that over here on the on the driver's side, uh, this thing was um, it was mangled um, back at that time. And, and I don't think I ever knew whether that came from the factory like that or or what. But um, this time around, I may consider ordering a replacement uh, if they're still available. And if they're not, I'm going to have to figure out how to, um, you know, to patch this thing up, um, you know, so that it, when it plugs into the um, to the remainder of the driver's side. Air handling system, it uh, you know it won't lose too much air. That opening feeds a uh, air conditioning vent that I guess is meant to go up the driver's knee or you know the driver's side um, right leg. And um, of course it uh, it's it's got a it's got a vent um, you know that's for directional vent also. Um, so of course that's. That's that. Um, so we can set this um, incredibly awkward and uh, tedious thing off to the side and, and take a look at what we're going to have to tackle next uh, to continue getting out the air handler. So that goes down by the wayside. And now let's talk about this up here. Okay. Um, we're beginning to be able to see the the termination of the air handler box. Uh, there are two uh, bolts here that connect a, um, a mechanism that diverts air um, up to the um, defrost plenum. This defrost plenum, of course, it comes up and then it, it comes out on top right there. So the defrost plenum and uh, you may notice that um, back in the day in 2014, I attempted to you know, wrap some um, aluminum foil um, to seal this uh, pathetic gap uh, between the between the, uh, the the air handler coming off of the uh, the, the the box up to the duct that takes it up to the um, to the dash upper dash I mean that, that gap is just laughable um, you know I mean all of the air would just just flow out of that thing you know without any uh, force um, making its way up to the um, to the outlet for the dash but in any event uh, you know we're a little bit closer uh, I think I see yet another bowl uh, way back in there so we'll have to contend with that uh, so maybe we are down to three more bolts before getting the um, the box out of here and then of course once you get the box out you exchange the, the heater core more to follow we continue all right, uh, let's get down a little closer. Those two bolts are uh, removed. And then the one that's hiding way back in there, uh, that's been removed also. Over here, the, um, the cable has been removed from this. So now we're actually uh, starting to get pretty close to uh, being able to turn loose the air handler. But uh, something to talk about on this. There is a bolt uh, right here that I've already uh, taken out. And I believe there are two down here that can come out. That one's actually uh, from five years ago was never fully seated. Uh, this one, yeah, that's only hand tied. It was never fully seated either. And I actually will have to think back to why I did it like that. Why did I, uh, why was I never able to uh, make it uh, embed into the proper spot? But so be it. Let's put that down in here. Uh, just a, a, another note. Um, 
that uh, that little black box with the uh, clear plastic lid it's actually a uh, interior fastener kit that I purchased um, you know back when I did the interior quite a few years ago so I've got uh, several extra uh, stainless um, stainless screws and the uh, trim rings that um, you know make everything uh, look pretty good when you're going back together so I, I've, 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 I've got enough um, um, fittings and to put this back together but back up to this guy um, okay we we took out the the three bolts from this side but you may be able to see way back up in at this spot there is a um, it's actually a stud that goes through to the other side so we're going to pull out of the cab we're going to go into the engine bay and I'm going to show you where that uh, that nut is so hang on Okay, uh, let's see, back uh, roughly in this area. Yeah, where can we find that thing? Maybe we have to get a flashlight too. Okay, down there uh, in a not very visible spot. That's a nut. So that nut needs to be backed off, and that uh, should be the last thing that's holding the the air handler uh, to the firewall. So let me take care of that, and I will rejoin you, uh, possibly with the air handler falling into my hands. So one moment. So it's not exactly falling into my hands. Uh, it's possible that there are still a couple more connectors uh, to some of the operating devices such as the uh, the vacuum um, gates that, that would open and close some of the doors. Now maybe I'm seeing um, a, a couple of those vacuum hoses that are still there. But uh, let's see, you know, it's uh, it's about to come out. And uh, I, I should also remind you um, that that you have, since the the nipples of the heater core are are on the outside of the firewall in in the engine bay, you have to pull them through um, in order to you know to bring this whole device um, um, back out, and and then of course uh, get your access to the heater core proper. So it is going to take two hands, uh, which. You know, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, the camera, uh, wrestle it out, and uh, then we will pick up again, uh, taking a look at how the heater core is attached into the uh, to this um, air handler. So one moment, and no more air handler. Uh, but I do want to show you a couple of things, and actually, I'm I'm showing them on the video to help me remember. This vacuum hose, um, it, it goes to the um, to the vacuum machine on the, um, on the back side. That would be uh, fitting roughly into this spot. And then this vacuum, um, we're going to figure out where it goes, but it actually goes down into the air handler uh, to a fitting that I haven't seen. I, I simply pulled this loose. Um, but um, in any event, I don't want to forget that these need to go on the back side of the the air handler when we're going to be reinstalling um, the repaired um, um, heater core. When you look back in there, um, this is the little pathway that the um, that the nipples off of the heater core pass out of the um, uh, from the inside of the car to the outside of the car. Uh, not that you can see it that well, but uh, up here is the uh, air conditioning. Um, would that be the condenser? I think that'd be the condenser. And then this is part of the, um, um, the, the fan switch system. So it hangs down in the plenum also. And of course you get the gist of uh, how this works. The, 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 the fan box is on the back side of the um, air conditioning 
um, condenser and it blows the air through and then it uh, has a chance to come through the air handler uh, if it has to pick up heat. And then of course it goes through all of this um, uh, really, well, you know, the duct system. So let's go out and take a look. The air handler, there she is. You troublemaker. Uh, some things to talk about on this. Um, I mentioned that I, I replaced the, the gaskets um, back when I did this uh, in 2014. But it's got one gasket that fits around the, um, the, the tubes. And of course that, um, that helps you know, differentiate between the inside and the outside. Uh, it's got this that um, if it fit a little bit better it would it would fit up in this area I think uh, looks like I've got something wrong here um, there should be a continuation of that gasket material um, through this area but it's not there obviously so uh, a couple of bolts here one here maybe another one down here and that will release the um, the trap door that seals the heater core uh, back in there. So again, more to follow. Hello again, everybody. Okay, we've got um, the replacement core that came from O'Reilly Auto Parts. And uh, when I looked at it, it, uh, it said it was from China. And it looks to me like maybe it's aluminum. Uh, the core that is uh, that was in there and leaking, it uh, looks like it's, I guess, brass. Um, but there's a couple of things about this box. Uh, in the, the last segment, um, the gasket was still in place, and the gasket, the gasket had to be removed in order to get to all of the screws. And if I'm um, looking over here and counting, that is two, four, six, seven screws were necessary to um, remove from the, uh, I guess that would be a cast aluminum uh, fitting necessary to um, begin to access where the heater core lives. So let's see if we can give it a grab. Oh, um, sorry, one more thing too. Up here up on top, uh, you had to remove this screw and you had to remove this screw. And actually, um, way back in um, 2014, I, I even put the, uh, the little reference marks so that I could reassemble it back into the same place, assuming that, uh, you know, it was a critical measurement. Maybe not. Anyways, just pull this thing out. get a look at this guy see what was causing so much trouble uh, yeah I'd say that's a problem completely burnt through and that's it is interesting looks like a, um, a, a different concept of of how they did the tubes and the the fins. Uh, this one, the the new one's uh, quite a bit denser than the uh, than the old one. That'll be interesting to see how it performs. In any event, um, next up, unbolting the the heater core, uh, which looks like you've got a. a something there that clamps down this end and probably yeah you've got a matching clamp on this end pipes go through the face there is a little uh, insulator piece that that goes behind the um, the aluminum um, continues to separate the two different sides uh, hot side cold side all good so um, next video coming up, or I guess next segment, and uh, maybe time to start reassembly. Okay, now the 
new aluminum heater core from China is um, installed into the box and it's, it's fastened on the inside but I've got to show you something out here that's um, that's going to be um, a little bit of a fix this um, this this I guess you call it a bracket or um, something uh, what it does is it um, slides in and then it has a screw hole here and a screw hole here but if you if you see what's going on it looks like the new tubing is a little bit higher than stock and um, you know from that guy over there so I think I'm going to have to get the tin snips out and remove a little bit of material up here so that it'll it'll go ahead and it'll come down and I can uh, put that screw hole through just like you would expect um, no worries you know that's 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 no big deal I don't think it's that bad of a of a thing hopefully the new heater core will last for a long time and nobody well uh, I won't see this again uh, before I, uh, I turn off this uh, this video segment uh, we can grab this over here and yeah that's that's the problem on that side and then there is a problem on this side also so I don't know I wish it had held up longer than it did well in the last uh, video segment the heater core was installed into the, um, the air handler and now as you can tell in this view uh, the air handler has been remounted up against the firewall and the very difficult uh, piece of the plenum has been um, reinstalled and uh, what I did on the the, uh, the the gap that goes uh, from the air handler up to the uh, defrost port I went ahead and I used uh, this kind of tape I think it's some uh, plumbing tape you know you put it around a gas line uh, or anything that goes up subterranean it's just got a real good adhesive and it's you know plastic no big deal uh, so I did that to seal up the the, the gap between the two different uh, segments of plenum and then uh, I did the same thing with this guy. Um, you may recall that he had uh, a really busted up tip. So that's been um, um, just taped. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, it, it'll, it'll hold air. Uh, it sticks into the, uh, rim, you know, the other side with that friction fit. Uh, right now, this guy is uh, not attached, but it is in proper place. And so that is probably, you know, 50% of the, uh, the work to get this thing back together. Um, before the next segment, I'll go underneath the car and I will attach the heater hoses. Um, and then I'll go ahead and uh, refill the uh, radiator. And I want to go ahead and start the car and run it um, before I finish uh, putting the uh, remainder of the dash pad in and the reason is is I want to make sure that all of these gauges are operational since I was uh, kind of rough with um, pulling on all of the the wires um, mangling the uh, the system in and out so I'm going to make sure it runs uh, happily um, the um, door locks uh, I check them and, and they do work so uh, no issue there so there you go uh, putting it back together again. See you in the next segment. Hello again everybody and um, I, as mentioned in the last segment I went ahead and uh, topped off the coolant, um, attached the heater core, uh, the heater hoses and went ahead and started the car up but I did all of this while it's still on jack stands because I want to find out if it's um, if there's going to be any leaks at the heater hoses and be able to crawl underneath and tighten those hoses until they stop leaking um, as far as the 
gauge cluster. It is, looks like it's fully operational. And when I went through all of the um, HVAC controls, everything operates the way it should. So I think I'm ready to button this thing up again. Uh, see you in the next set. Well, it is just about done on the heater core replacement. All of the central consoles back in, including the um, air conditioning ducts up at the top. The um, knee pad uh, dash panels back in place. And the duct system that's back in there is, is all intact. So it was quite a bit of work to exchange the heater core on the C3 uh, 1976 Corvette. Now I'm not done um, because so much of that fluid um, um, got down into the carpet. I went ahead and I have pulled the seat out and I'm going to go ahead and, and remove that uh, section of carpet and um, hose it out, let it dry out uh, before I put it back in. It's pretty easy to take the seats out. It's just four bolts. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close out the video and um, I just just say that that if you have a heater core go out, um, you know, I feel for you because it's going to be uh, just like what I experienced. It's going to be a day of labor. Or uh, if you take it to the shop, you know, I, I don't know. I never I didn't get an estimate, but I can't imagine that it would be less than um, you know, several hundred dollars um, uh, for a mechanic, you know, to spend that same number of hours, or even if they're fast, um, you know, it's still going to take half a day. So um, that's how that goes. I'm glad mine is exchanged and hope it doesn't go out again. So bye bye, guys.